Hi, I am John Lira, and in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to split the column data from a source file using Power Center. The actual technical creators of the demo are my colleagues Nico Heinze and Karin Divens from Informatica Germany. And so what we're trying to do right here is, assuming you have a source data and you also have header and footer data, the goal is to be able to write a mapping that is that you are able to grab column data. So you're going to output column data of your choosing and then write it out to a target file, but also include a header and a footer. So if you look at this, notice that we are reading column B data first and then column A, but we've also included a header and then we end with a footer. So how do we do that? We're going to use the normalizer transformation. We're going to use the pipelines, the target load, mapping variables, and in the session workflow, how to actually append to an existing file. So let's get started to the demo. So I have Power Center open here, and I have the designer, and we have two pipelines. The critical things, or the little tricks, are the normalizer, and you should, you should have a good handle on what the normalizer does already. I'm going to show you how we're going to use it as a little technique. Then the sorter also will be involved, and then the second pipeline will be involved. All this to try to use existing transformations and pipelines to do what we want, which is to be able to read data from a file column by column and write it, down, write it out with a header and a footer. So let's start off with the map under mappings. Let's start off with the parameters and variables. Right now, what we have, and you'll recognize that this is in German, so we have the Kopsila, which is the header row, and the Fusila, which is the footer. Uh, the footer. So for the header, we have something called username. That is a constant. For the footer, we have something called end constant. Normally, you're going to parameterize this and read it from a parameter file. So the header will be the username, and the footer will be the end constant. So that's going to be written out to a flat file. Okay, so that was it. Now we have two pipelines. Remember that in in the in in power center mappings, the order of execution matters. So what we want is the first pipeline to to be executed, and then follow by the second pipeline. How do we tell the integration service to do this? Yes, you're right. We go to the target load plan. So this is very important. And again. Many of you already know this because you've taken Informatica Power Center courses or you have experience. So notice that the first pipeline, source qualifier, is going to be executed first, followed by the second pipeline called source qualifier dummy. Notice there, of course, if I change it, the results will not be the same. So execute the first pipeline, followed by the second. The second pi pipeline is just the dummy. It is a little technique on how we can read a file so that we can output the footer information. I'll come back to that in a moment. So the second pipeline is just a dummy pipeline, pretty much. Let's go to the core of our mapping. So what we have here is we're going to read data. And as you saw in the presentation, is just column data. And we're going to read it in a source qualifier. Nothing magic there. It's just two columns of data, and we want to read the column B data first, followed by the column A, and we want to output them in that, in, that, in that fashion. So what are we going to do? The secret is the normalizer, but before we can use it, let me arrange all so we can see the transformations themselves. I'm going to also give us more space on the left-hand side and on the bottom by taking away the navigator and the status at the bottom. And now this looks a little bit cleaner here. And what we're going to have now is we have the transformations. And notice that the first one transformation here, we're basically going to keep track of the row number. Silent number uh, is the row number we're going to add to it. So that's pretty straightforward. Notice the row number three right there, right here. This is the column A data. 
row number four is column B data. So notice that I would have to change this if I had column A data, column B, column C, column D. You would have to modify this. In our source data that we have, we only have uh, two, row, two, two rows, A and B, and they have these are the names of those fields. So that's how we have it. And notice, then we keep an index of the first and the second. This will be important because remember, we want to read column data and also write it out. So we might want to read the fifth column then and write it out, then the fourth column data and write it out, etc., etc. So this is the technique that's being used here. Now the normalizer from the, you can always read the normal, what the normalizer does in the transformation guide. And in there it says that the normalizer allows us to create from one row several rows. So without going into all the details of what the normalizer is, because remember, I'm not teaching you the normalizer. I'm just showing you how we're going to use the normalizer in a little trick. So notice the normalizer we're reading in the data. But notice the GK, which is the generated key, and then the GCID, the generated column ID. Well, if you remember the normalizer, it's going to generate a GK. And then for each row, the next row will have, let's say, let's assume it starts at 10. The next row will be 11, 12, 13. And then the GCID will be the first element of that row, the second element. So we're not even going to use that. We're going to create our own indices to keep track because we want to be able to read column B data, the first row. Column B data, the second row. Column B data, the third row. And then we'll go to column A data, the first row the second row, etc. And then you can see how you would generalize that. So let's go into the normalizer and we'll go to the normalizer and notice that we're not using uh, basically uh, all the properties of it. We're bringing in the row number, the silent number, and then here are the things that I was talking to you about. Okay, so that's all we're doing. Notice that the generated key, GK and GCID are not being sent out. Why? If we sent them out, then it would start, it would always start in sequence. The first row, the second row, the third row, we would not have a way to control the number. And what we want, we again, we want to read column B data, first row. Column B data, second row. Column B data, third row. And then we want to reset it to column A data, A row. Column A data, second row. Column A data, third row. So that's why we're not using the normalizer. We're basically just using it as a dummy normalizer to split a row into multiple rows. That's what it is. Now look at the sorter. You see the sorter? We're bringing in the row number and the field text, but here's the little trick. In the, in the properties here, notice what we have here in the ports. Notice that we are sorting descending. Why? Because we want to peel, split the data, say column B in this example, and write that out. Then we want row A data, etc. So we're descending because we're pulling off the column first and then the one that comes before. So that's why the little trick of the sorter starting in descending order. And then we have our the, the final transformation here to construct our record that we want to produce. So notice we use the decode statement and pretty straightforward the row number and the before index and then the header and then the text we want. So basically we're constructing the record that will be sent out to the target file and you can see that we're using various variable ports etc. All right and now the target the target file will produce this record, a dummy string, and let's see how big it is, a 50. So that means we constructed the record. When we run this workflow, it's going to create a file, and it's going to output that field called dummy. Maybe not the best name, but that's, that's the field name called dummy. So that's what happens. Now let's go and arrange all iconic, and let's take a look at the second pipeline. Remember that what we want in the second pipeline we, are, we want the footer data. So in PowerCenter, we always have to read some dummy data. Otherwise, 
we would not have a valid transformation. If I were to take the input source file and the source qualifier out, I would have an invalid mapping. So these first two items here are just dummies so I can have a valid transformation. So let's open up the expression transformation and notice that basically what I have here is the footer row. All I'm saying is that foodzela, an output port, is going to be sent out. Now remember what this has. This variable foodzela is essentially, essentially the mapping variable up here that we said earlier, right here. Notice it's basically hard-coded to say end constant. That's it. Again, as I said earlier, you might want to parameterize this so it can read this data more dynamically from your parameter file. So that is pretty much the second pipeline. And they're both going to write to the same target file. The first pipeline will create and write to the target file. The second one is not going to create, but append to that. So we'll see how we're going to do that in the workflow session. So now let's go to the workflow. And notice right here, we have a workflow, and I'll go into the session. Nothing magic here, pretty straightforward. We have the, the source, the data, and then we have this dummy file that we got to have just so we can have a valid mapping. And then we have the first target. Notice in the target, it is a flat file, and the file name is called target.txt. Notice that we, are, we don't have the little box that says append checked off. Notice that we don't have it. Append if exists, we do not have it checked off because the first pipeline is going to create the file. The second pipeline, which is using target1, is going to use the same file that was created, but this time we say append if the file exists. That's how we're going to get the footer into that same file. So once we validate, we'll run, we'll start the workflow, and as you know, at that point, it's pretty straightforward. We go to monitor, and we'll see that it ran successfully, the first one on top. Run, and let's go look at the data file. Remember that it is a target. We'll open it up. And if you recall the data, we have column B data, column A data. Let me, let me just move up a little bit so you can see the header. Here goes the header, then column B data, column A data, and then the footer. Pretty, pretty nifty, isn't it? Now, that concludes our demo. And let me just go back to the mappings so that you can end with that and see it. And I hope you have enjoyed this demonstration. And so in summary, the goal was to bring in source data, be able to peel off a column, add a header and a footer to the column data, and write it out. Thank you very much.